Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, this edition of Not Playing Magic with me, your host, Not. Um, we are on the draw, so this is a fine hand on the draw. We will not be mulliganing. Um, we'll see what, what our opponent's going with. Um, he is blue, and that's kind of bad because blue uh, was very open. Um, Alright, well we drew into everything we needed, so uh, this is good. We'll go ahead and play out our planes, pass over the turn. Um, obviously, crew and striker into ringleader into protector is probably the play at this point if we draw the land. Um, otherwise, the play is crew and striker into ringleader into call to serve on the ringleader. Alright, well, our opponent doesn't have anything. One thing we do have to be cautious about uh, here is uh, that our opponent had the Wolfier Avenger that we passed in pack two, if you guys uh, watch the draft and do recall. Um, that's not really something that I really I want to play into. Uh, but if he if he represents that here and doesn't drop it, okay, so he can't even represent it. That's fine. We're playing the triumph. Um, something we may need to consider uh, bringing in the curse break four in game two. We'll go ahead and play this guy out first for obvious reasons. Um, swing in for three while we can. Okay, pass the turn through. And uh, be done. So we want to keep that from activating uh, as best we can. Um, if he plays out a creature with two toughness and a two butt, um, we'll probably uh, we'll probably pillar it. We'll, we'll we'll delay the. Okay, so he has one mist raven. Um, we'll see which one he pings in. Probably the three drop is my guess. Uh, and we're we're kind of mana screwed if he chooses to do so. Okay, so he doesn't. Um, That's fine. So our play here is uh, going to be to pillar off the um, the Miss Raven, stopping the Triumph from activating before the attack. And uh, we have a couple of options. We could play the Vessel out here. However, we really need to get um, get aggro if we're the aggro guys. Uh, We'll give him a chance on his next turn to have one final Mist Raven before we drop down our Called Surf. Um, playing against the blue deck, you know, I'm not terribly excited to be giving him a chance to uh, freely pop our enchantments. Um, that's not a good place for us to be. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what our opponent does. We've kept him off the draw at least one turn there. And hopefully play something that we can try to swing through. So he's on three colors. Um... It's kind of scary for us, I suppose. Those are all very good colors. They can have very big creatures. And with five mana, we're not able to deal with any very big creatures. So, he's going to play the next card off the top of our deck. Alright, Fervent Cathar. Um, I guess that's fine. Uh, we would have really liked to have hit that, obviously. Uh, it would have been a swing for eight, but now it's our opponents, and uh, we'll have to swing through it on our next turn. So... If he turns it sideways here, though, that's probably a mistake on his part. I don't see our opponent doing that, actually. Yeah, okay, so he is going to do it. Um, very aggro of him. I don't think he has a green one drop. I don't think any exist. Uh, so what he's basically saying here is that he doesn't mind taking the uh, seven damage. Um, and we absolutely don't mind that either. Okay. So let's go ahead and, uh, just in case, give our ringleader uh, pro green. I don't think there would be any reason, um, but we'll do it. Okay, so, um, like we said, our opponent has taken now uh, more damage than he probably wanted to there. Um, doesn't have a very good board out. Uh, does get the activation on his... Um, Triumph of Ferocity, though, so uh, that's just one thing for us to consider. Um, we'll see what his play is. If he doesn't Mist Raven here, then we are going to, on our next turn, get our um, Riot Ringleader up in the air, uh, put him in the Call to Serve position. Uh, okay, so we have Bunding Crows. So he's slowing this game down a little bit uh, on himself. But if he's drawing into something, you know, powerful, then uh, that's a fine play for him. 
I'm not sure why you abundant growth this planes there. This is just kind of a tip for maybe some newer players. You'd want abundant growth the land that you have the most of because if you do need a planes, uh, for whatever reason, um, you've kind of just uh, just screwed yourself out of it. Or two planes rather, like let's say you've got a seraph in your deck. Always abundant growth the lands that you have in excess. Um, yeah. Okay, if you were to swing in there, we'd just let that go. Um, all right, Far Bog, far bog Explorer is fine. Uh, the good thing about this Far Bog Explorer is he buffs our um, current striker here. So we go ahead and uh, play out our Boggy friend. Okay. We're going to go ahead and get our Ringleader up in the air. Um, and then we're going to swing in with the team. So we've got a lot of damage coming out. He's going to at least take four and possibly wipe his own board um, with another four looming next turn. So uh, he's not in a good spot. Um, if he has the righteous blow, he has the righteous blow. Uh, that's another good thing about getting the call to serve on your riot ringleader. I would not like to draw him to land next turn. That puts us in a pretty poor position. Um, okay, so he's going to give us a lot of the damage and keep our board presence. That's fine. Um, okay, so if our opponent only plays out one creature and doesn't have like an Into the Void or something, uh, then he's in a bad place. He also should have blocked in a way that kept the guy up for his enchantment activation. Um, but I don't know that he had the option, so this could be a Spirit Away possibly at this much mana. Alright. So, there's a scenario where you guys tell me what you think. That's just a bad play. Uh, it, I understand taking it in a draft environment, um, but all that was was a 7-mana card draw, uh, and we're okay with that. Uh, so, knowing that our opponent has that, I mean, we don't play around a card like that. Um, there's nothing we can do. And yeah, I'm just really, really kind of having a hard time understanding why you would, why you would bring that... Um, Temporal Mastery out there. Okay. Uh, interesting line of play by our opponents. What we do need to bring in, as we saw, is the Curse Break. Our opponent can't be drawing on us like that um, all game. What do we want to toss? Um, probably the thing to pitch is... Either one of the Protectors, though I like the, the size of the butt on the Protectors. Um... Maybe the Vessel. We didn't see any of our green cards, and had we, we would have been able to play them. So maybe we do keep the Vessel. Um, let me know what you guys board out in this scenario. I'm going to board out one of the mid Midbasts. Uh, he plays a little bit slow for our deck, um, but... But yeah, so we'll go ahead and submit. Uh, this is a very fine hand. Um, yeah, we do like this hand. We do not want a mulligan. Okay. Um, we are going to pair the first strike on the Pilgrim, I think. Uh, Wingcrafter, okay, that's fine. Our opponent getting some guys in the air, though, is bad for us. Um, we'll play out the planes and probably eat one point of damage on our next turn. Okay, so our line of play is going to be uh, probably Pilgrim to Cathar, unless our opponent has a two-drop, three-drop combo. Which you may have a Stitcher's or Alchemist Apprentice. Um, if he puts that thing in the air, we're cool with that. Uh, that's just a bad, bad card to, to put in the air. But the nice thing about soul bonding with this guy, for obvious reasons, um, you can just drop the bond whenever you feel like sacking him and drawing a card. So it's it's real value, I suppose. Okay, so we're gonna take three points of damage to start this game. We already know that, uh, and we're okay with that. Our opponent's playing on three colors, and we were hoping that he sort of gets color screwed or something because of that, uh, kind of like we're about to get. All right, so what do we play out first? Um, we're going to go ahead and, in this case, we're going to play out the Inquisitor. I don't want to play out the Pilgrim first because then he has to swing on the next turn. Well, he would be the one swinging on the next turn after his sickness wears off, and then he just, you know, blocks with one of these guys and we're kind of screwed. So I feel like by playing out the Inquisitor... He thinks to himself, oh, you know what, I don't want to sack my whole board to block him, so he's going to swing in with team um, on his next play. In which case, we bring in the Pilgrim, still link them together, and uh, have benefited there. 
Okay, well, our opponent does seem to be uh, mana screwed. Um, favorable winds will blow us out sooner than later, um, but if he keeps swinging, uh, that's fine. Okay, so he's not going to keep swinging. Um, with both, at least. If I'm my opponent here, I, I try to race me. Uh, I know that he's mana screwed, if he, unless he just is playing his mana out in his second end step. Um, so I think he's got to go for the race in this scenario. Alright. We'll go ahead and play off the mountain. Um, let's see, what's the what's the play here? Uh, I think we just make him sack. Um, getting the creatures off flying uh, is a big deal at this point with a mana screwed opponent who's playing a favorable wins. So we'll attack. If he blocks here, um, we'll pump him. All right, so he is going to block. Uh, that's fine. We want to get that Wing Crafter off the ground. I know that this, this slows us down a little bit as the aggro deck. Um, and this is a smart play on our opponent's part. Make us waste our mana for him to draw cards. So, you know, it's it's truly a benefit to our opponent. But um, it's, it's the right play there. Uh, we risk taking more damage, letting him have a Wing Crafter target. And if he's still land screwed... Um, you know, he's just in a bad place on the next turn. Okay. Well, he must be land screwed is all we can take from this. Alright, we've drawn into another mountain. Um, that's fine. Alright, what we're going to do is get our... Uh, I believe we're going to get our Pilgrim in. We want to save... Um, we would like to save our Fervent Cathar for next turn. Um, to, if he does leave something back to block, we would like to save in that scenario. So yeah, we want to use our Soul Bond with our First Striker. Um, do we want to use the mana to get our Call to serve out at this point? We have to think. Um, having a potential uh, Flying First Striker, I feel like, is a good game. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. It pushes more damage across at this point in the game. Um, we're still two turns from being Miss Raven, uh, and it gives us the flying first strike. So our opponent's game is in the air right now, and we want our game to to block that while still being aggressive. So um, this is the this is the right play. I feel like you guys can let me know what you think. Um, now, if we draw into our curse break, I don't want our opponent to hit his mana. Um, I'm sure you know odds of him doing it are are fairly high. Um, all right, so he's going to pair up his his friendly wing crafters here. Um, that's okay with us. We'll, we'll gladly use the mana to prevent, um, our creature from dying, and we'll still be getting the life drain and all that, so, um, okay, this is an even better scenario for us, uh, we don't have to worry, we're just gonna go ahead and Fervent Cathar on our next turn, and get in for, um, a cool seven here and life gain three of that. So yeah, this is this is gonna be a good play for us. So the guy he left back to block, he's gonna realize can't. Um, he's just taking a good amount of damage with no mana on the table. Uh, not a good place to be if you're our opponent. All right. Um, there's no vapor snag in this format, so we don't have to worry about any weird shenanigans. Um, all right. We'll see. I, I kind of wish... Okay, there we go. Our opponent does hit a land. That's good. Um, playing a, a completely land-screwed game doesn't really prove anything. Um, doesn't make you a better player, and I'm still learning, so... You know, I don't... I don't want to see my opponent in such poor, poor shape. All right, we've got to assume he's got an Into the Void or some sort of peel here to be swinging with both, or a creature that uh, has a big butt on it. Um... So something that would make him swing there. Okay, it's just the Drake. Uh, it's fine. Alright, so what are we going to do here? Um, we can get in for 7 if we revolt, um, which is going to be our play. We'll also keep up our first striker in the air. Uh, I don't think we're going to have a better chance to get in with the revolt than we are now. Actually, let's, uh, did I just play out my, 
Wrong mana. Okay. Well, that was a very poor play. Um, played out not to forest, so we don't even have the option to do what I was talking about. Uh, however, we will bring in the revolt. Um, get in for seven here and leave our opponent in a, in a much tougher position. Uh, we'll play out the Descendant's Path next turn. This is actually better because it forces me to leave the first strike mana back. Um, which I suppose is a good thing. Okay. So obviously we're going to swing with all of our friends. Putting our opponent down, um, you know, fairly low life. Um, we don't have a ton of power on board though. Uh, so I think our opponent's going to sit back and a, a sitting back opponent is not a good opponent when we're the aggro deck. Um, I know we only need to do three damage. You know, we could Miracle the Thunderous Wrath and hit it on his head. So we do have some things that could happen for us. Um, our opponent seems to be playing his lands out on his opening turn, on his opening main step, so it doesn't look like he hit his extra land, which means our opponent probably has to sit back with everyone. Uh, though he could swing in with his Drake, I suppose. Um, all right. Okay, I think we just win here. Um, we can get in for four on the, er, let's see. How do we play this? Um, we can play out the Cathar and keep up our first strike mana. So, I think we make him trade off a Wing Crafter here. Um, by making the Scrapskin Drake not able to block. Uh, he has to put, so if we make the Scrapskin Drake not able to block, what our opponent end up ha ends up having to do is put a Wing Crafter um, on the Moorland Inquisitor, which is an instant kill, uh, and one on our ground guy. Um, but I think we still get in for four here, so I think this might be it unless he has a peel. Okay. So he kept out a sheltering word. Um, that's fine. Good to know, I suppose. Um, gained him some life. Uh, all the good things you want that to do. Um, what we're going to do is offer him the, the Wing Crafter trades. Um, those guys are useless to us at this point. Alright, so he's going to take them. That's fine with us. Uh, we hope the Descendant's Path puts us another creature on board um, on the next turn. So, if he doesn't draw into mana, if he does, I'm sure he's missed Ravening our Call to Serve off the board, and in which case, I guess that card got us a lot of use. Uh, we would actually rather be on the ground here, um, which our opponent probably realizes. <laughs> Uh, with that Moreland, we'd have won had the Moreland Inquisitor not had flying uh, a long time back, so. Um, Alright, he's going to toss them both into our hands. That's fine. That seems like a kind of aggro play, knowing we're like a Thatcher's Revolt Descendant's Path deck. Um, but that's good. Alright, we'll see what we get. Okay, it was a mountain, that's fine. Uh, we do want to cycle through our lands that way once we're at this point in the game, so that's good. Um, all right, our opponent doesn't have swamps, so swamp blocking is pretty relevant. Uh, we don't have enough planes out to play enough guys. Um, we do want our first striker out there uh, and our explorer, not our pilgrim in this scenario. We want these to be the two that could potentially swing in next turn. So we'll go ahead and play this and pass the turn. Our opponent does have the land he needs to, to make our lives pretty miserable. Um, however, Scrapskin Drake is, is a pretty poor draw for our opponent um, against our deck. Uh, obviously, the, the guy who can't block us against uh, us. So, he's in a tough spot where he has to swing with that guy almost every turn. Um, if he taps here, I'm assuming Mist Raven. Uh, or peel. Um, so yeah, that guy has to attack here, and he knows he's going to be taking four next turn if he can't play anything else out, so Scrapskin kind of put him in a, uh, a pretty crappy position. Uh, though he is 
got, he does have us on a six turn clock. We've got him on a little bit better. All right, he's got a shield mate. Um, I suppose that's fine. Uh, we're hoping to flood him out in this at this point. We'll see what our opening card here is. Yep, we'll uh, we'll cast out the vigilante. Okay. We don't want our opponent to know we have that mountain. Um, there's no need. Uh, let's see. We can swing in for a fair amount of damage by doing nothing on this turn. So that's going to be the play. Um, we want our inquisitor again to have. Um, Life Leech, I feel like. Uh, yeah, we still do. Alright. Um, so, with that shield mate down, uh, there's nothing we can do. We're going to take for one more turn uh, before we start swinging in for um, overwhelming damage. We've only got in for two there and lost a guy. Uh, so that's not a trade we want to make with a Descendant's Path on the table. Um... If our opponent can Mist Raven us again, that does slow down the game. I mean, basically, he's got to play the slow, and he's doing it perfectly. Uh, so, you know, nothing against our opponent. I don't think he's a bad player, but he's in a tough spot at the moment. Uh, maybe he's Mist Ravening us, though. All right. Um, so he's, he's probably going to give us the Explorer, I would assume, or the uh, Inquisitor. Okay. So he's actually got us on a good clock now uh, for, for our opponent. Um... We really need to just start flooding out the board at this point and actually getting a creature we can swing in with lifelink or um, hitting our zealous conscripts. So we do have creatures that work for that. Um, pillar, what does this do for us? Yeah, I think Pillar can win us the game here. Um, we'll go ahead and play out our Inquisitor. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll soul bond here. Um, do we want to give him another turn before we pillar? I don't think we do. I think we need to get his power off the board at the moment. Uh, I think we'll trade any of these guys for any of his guys' heads up. Um, so, actually, we just want to give him the, the Vigilante as a worse trade for him. Um, he can get killed by uh, a couple of the other guys. Though an explorer for Mist Raven is a good trade for us. So we'll uh, we'll attack him with these two guys. Make him make the choice. He can't let the damage go through sitting on seven. So um, we'll see what he decides to do. What he what he does with his blocks. Um, all right. So he's going to give us the Mist Raven. Little does he know. Uh, and that's that's good for us. Okay, so cool. Um, you know, we, we we made a fair trade there, I think. Um, let's see. Alright, so we're really hoping to draw into a couple creatures next turn. Um, that may have been the wrong play. We may have wanted to wait until this turn to have, until the the first striker could have went to make that play. Um, I'm not actually sure. Uh, our opponent has a lot of mana and still has four cards in hand, so I think this is going to get pretty ugly for us pretty quickly. Um, yeah, that's that's the card we wanted. Uh, that's really bad for us in in that scenario. Um, okay. So what does that mean for us? Um, let's think. Okay, so he's only swinging in with one. Um, we would like to hit a Cathar here. I don't know if we've played all of ours. I think we have. All right, we'll see if we ping another human. Yep, we'll play this one. Absolutely play this one. Um, on our first striker for some obvious reasons here. Oh, wait, we can. He's already linked. Okay. 
So let's uh, go to our draw. It's a planes. Um, hmm. I think we have to wait the one more turn. Uh, obviously, sitting back here is bad for us, but um, he doesn't have a profitable attack really on his next turn. Um, we have the Descendants Path and another chance to draw into a human. So um, we'll go ahead and, and see what happens. Now what I'm hoping happens here is that he gets uh, gets happy feet and um, swings with team. I suppose our opponent should do that though. Um, if any of the damage leaks through and we don't win on our next turn, then he just does with the flyer. Um, We'll, we'll have to consider our options in, in this case. I think that uh, this game stalled out too much for us, and I think we pillared the wrong, the wrong target. So, yeah, he's got a vanishment. Um, I don't think we're out just yet, though. Even with the vanishment. I think our opponent has to swing team here. No, he doesn't. Um, all he did with that Vanishment was uh, guarantee that that card's coming out um, right now. Okay, so yeah, we knew this was coming. Um, I think we still pair him up with the first strike. Uh, Since we're not going to be able to pair up the um, the first strike with death strike, since they're both still sitting on board. Okay, current striker is a fair pick up here uh, to have death touch. So um, we're going to just going to go ahead and play out our other mana. Um, we are going to pair this guy up with the death touch, so our opponent. Um, yes, we wish to use this. Um, we're obviously going to be swinging the team. We need to hit a Thatcher's Revolt next turn to win, uh, but at least we have a chance, or a um, Thunderous Wrath. So there are a few outs for us. Um, we're going to sit back and uh, let our opponent swing in with his Zombie Drake one more time. We also may want to consider bringing in our Tapper Zombie. Or I, did we get the Artifacts Tapper? I don't really remember. We'll, we'll have to take a look in our board and see which one we got, because that's another way for us to get rid of enchantments. Okay, what does our opponent have here? All right, another shield mate. Um, so he's just gearing up for the defensive, which is what he needs to be doing. Yep. All right, so if we don't hit a Thunderous Wrath, we just lose. If we hit it on our Descendants Path, we feel pretty stupid. Oh, well, that's probably the game. Um, I do believe we take the... Uh, Right, ringleader here. Give it haste and swing in. Um, yep. Okay. And plus we still have our draw. If we draw into the Thatchers or something, okay. So I don't think he can put enough bodies out. Uh, he, our three, um, our three worst creatures are going to be the ones getting through, which is still going to be seven damage, um, plus one's a first strike. So we'll see if our opponent can block this. I don't think he can unless he has a peel in hand, which our opponent very well might, or a terrifying presence of some kind. Though a terrifying presence, or a, uh, a terrifying presence does something, appeal doesn't really. Um, I mean, it kind of does in that he can take my two of my guys off the board. Um, so yeah, I guess appeal does do do good good for our opponent. But then you have to wait another turn to play the zombie Drake. So um, I think we win, and unless he has the fog, uh, obviously. So let's kind of hang out and see what happens here. All right, so he's blocking the trample. We'll get one point over, so that leaves a lot still on the board. Um, I 
even with a peel of my, I think we still get it through, um, unless he can fog here. Okay, he can't, so um, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of that, that round. Um, maybe a misplay on the pillar of flame. Other than that, I feel like uh, we stuck it out and, and did well. So again, um, I always appreciate you guys watching, and I very much appreciate your comments, both uh, good and bad. Um, not necessarily bad in that you're angry or anything, but bad in that you're, you're critiquing me. So, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and we'll catch you all soon. Actually, we'll catch you in round two incoming.